Hey, John, John Deerte. It's the Robinson Show. What's up, dude? I was just talking, uh, while I was stalling before you called, I was going to have my co-host. He does the character. He does the character, and uh, I was going to have him do a rap song, and when I heard you calling, I was like, thank God I don't have to listen to him. (laughs) (laughs) How are you, dude? You're a comedian, uh, professional shit poster, and meme maker extraordinaire. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. Uh, and where are you from? Am I allowed to ask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, from a real small town in East Texas called uh, Cleveland, Texas. It's about 45 minutes uh, east of Houston. Okay. And when did you get started um, in the in the meme making? Like, when, when, when did you start that? Um, well, what actually started all of it was uh, in 2019, um, For six years, I was a pilot car driver. I had my own business uh, in the heavy haul industry, and I was working for myself. So I had grown my hair out for about five and a half years straight, and I was in Oregon, and it's 2019. I'm in Oregon. I'm working a job up there for like six months. Decided that I wanted to cut my hair off, and a friend of mine was with me. And he was like, I'm not going to listen to you the rest of this job, bitch, and complain about regretting the decision of cutting your hair off. He was like, I'm not letting you cut your hair. So we made a bet. And then that bet was I would post to Facebook because I was nobody online. I didn't really have a following at all. And, uh, yeah, I was like, I'll make a post on Facebook. I said, if I get 100 likes, I cut my hair. He was like, all right, bet. So I post the Facebook post an hour later. I go back and check it, and somebody had, I didn't have 100 likes, but somebody said, get a mullet. And so I looked at my buddy, and I said, what do you think about a mullet? He said, fuck the 100 likes. He said, let's go get you a mullet right now. (laughs) Yes! And uh, so we found the cheapest barber shop that we could. Some old-ass Asian lady was in there who barely even spoke a lick of English, like just hardly any english at all yes and uh, it was like it was like it was like five dollar haircut oh, that's <laughs> glorious and so i went in there and i showed her a picture of riffraff and joe dirt and i said i want you to make me look like their love child and i don't even think she understood all she did was look at me and ask me if i was sure and i told her i said look i'm paying you just fucking do it <laughs> and uh So she gives me this like white trash ass mullet and uh, I had a full beard. I told my buddy, I said, the beard's got to go. I got to get myself chops and fucking handlebars and um, went and bought a bunch of clothes from Goodwill. And so the next morning I told him, I was like, I'm going to rock this look for like a week and then I'm fucking done. (laughs) And he was like, all right. And, uh, the next morning, we get a call, and we were told to head to North Dakota. So we get in our trucks. We start hauling ass. We stop in Idaho, and uh, I'm getting fuel. And I have this, like, vintage Wrangler Pearl Snap shirt on, and I just looked ridiculous standing next to my diesel truck pumping fuel with this mullet and handlebars. And uh, I told my buddy, I said, take a couple pictures of me if you can. And he was like, all right. So he did, and uh, I ended up posting them to Facebook that night when we got stopped to a hotel. The next morning when I woke up, not even 10 hours later, those pictures had like 50,000 shares off of my Facebook page. Wow. And the comments were just floating, just like flooding in, and friend requests after friend request, and come to find out, they went viral off my page first, those two pictures, and but a police department in Pennsylvania who likes to shit post themselves got a hold of my pictures and they created a post with they basically stole my pictures and didn't give me no credit, nothing. They just reposted it and came up with a funny caption and it blew up for them. Like it was getting hundreds of thousands of shares. And so somebody tagged me in it and I was like, well, if they don't want to give me my credit, I'm going to shit talk this police department and everybody in the comments that's talking, that's running their mouth. And so I was in, I was all in those comments, just talking a gang of shit to everybody that I could. And uh, so it had a bunch of people start following me from that. And then like four or five months goes by I hadn't posted really anything to the the internet that was funny. Um, I was just working and living the regular life. And uh, 
one evening I got really stoned in a hotel parking lot and I had just came back from getting my mullet shaped up and all trimmed up and everything. I was going to ask, do you got like real uh, quick side note, do you go to the same Asian woman? Like you got to go, you got to, no, no, I didn't. I didn't. So I was, uh, <laughs> this time I was in Iowa. Okay. I was in Des Moines, Iowa at this point. And, um, so I go get my hair trimmed up and I go back to the hotel. You ever got a haircut and you just be feeling yourself afterwards? <sighs> Yeah. Feel like a brand new person. Yep. You know what I mean? So I, I go back to the hotel and I'm smoking a little bit of reefer and I was listening to LaGrange by ZZ Top and I shook my head because I, I had something, I think a fly or something maybe landed on my neck or something, but I shook my head to, to get whatever it was off of me and in my stoned ass brain, I was like, wouldn't that have been funny if the music would have only been playing when you shook your hair and it would stop when your hair stopped shaking? And I was like, wait a second. I was like, I'm pretty good at editing videos. Yes. I can make this happen. Yes. And so I made the video of me. Sh- every time I shook my hair, LaGrange by ZZ Top would play <laughs> and then my hair would shock shake and it would, it would shut off. <laughs> and I posted that to Facebook. Like I stood, I, I sat in the parking lot watching this video after I edited it and made it. Cause I made it in maybe like 10 minutes <laughs> and I watched it a hundred, couple hundred times laughing at myself. Yes. And I was like, this is fucking stupid. It's not good. You know, maybe people that actually know me on my Facebook will think it's funny. Other than that, <laughs> you know, it'll be just another dumb video on the internet. <laughs> and I posted it. And that motherfucker blew up. It got like a couple million views in 24 hours. Nice, dude. I always find when I make myself laugh, I know it's funny. Like, I, I just laugh hysterically at some stupid thought in my head or something. Like, that's going in, that's going into the skit I write or something. For sure. For sure. Now, at, ever since that day, that's I, I have the same thought process on it. That's awesome. And um, because, like, I mean, before I went viral, there was tons of shit that I've recorded or have done that probably could have gotten me some type of notoriety uh, um, <clears throat> online or some type of following or anything, but I just thought it was stupid and I never posted it. Yeah. And finally I just didn't care. And I started posting this dumb shit and people were eating it up. <laughs> and uh, like I said, that video got a couple million views and um, like, do you remember uh, rude Jude from uh, what is that damn TV show that was uh, hold on, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Jenny Jones, do you remember the Jenny Jones show? I don't remember that. No, okay, so Jenny Jones was like one of those talk shows talk show, that right? was on in like the late 90s, maybe the early 2000s, yeah, whatever. But there was this dude on there they had called Rude Jude, and um, he's a Jude Angelini, he has a he has a, a pretty much a podcast called the all out show on, uh, XM satellite radio and, uh, underneath, uh, M and M's, uh, radio station sh- uh, shade 45. Yes. And so he shares my shit all the time, which he has like millions of followers on Instagram. So every time he shares my stuff, That's they just flood to my page. And, um, at one point I was like, man, I'm not, funny enough to always have videos on hand to post i was like but i was like i'm pretty good at making memes so (laughs) i was like you know what i was like i'm just gonna start stealing people's memes and blasting my face on them and making my own memes (laughs) and that's what i've been doing for the last two years they're incredible i i think my all-time favorite is uh uh, don't say all men are trash and then post your little son calling him a king. He's a little bag of garbage too. Like that's yeah, that's see, dead that's on. every chick I went to high school with. <laughs> Goddamn. Um, you know, do you I get mean, a lot, do you get a lot of like hate on those, uh, on the comments? Uh, I've had some people, I've, man, I've had some, not ever comments. Nobody has really, I've had a few people talk shit in the comments. Like I posted a meme about, bicyclists because we all know they get on everybody's nerves when they're blocking traffic yeah um but i had one dude like he was like oh you're that asshole that drives a big lifted diesel truck that tries to run us over i'm like no but i mean if you have a line of traffic behind you get in the ditch and let us fucking pass for a second yeah you know? yeah Not that big of a deal. <laughs> people got places to be sometimes <laughs> okay um yes. 
I posted one time too uh, a meme about you know if you can't get your baby to stop crying, pick it up and throw it on the ground, and it said uh, something about um, sometimes I think my intelligence gra- uh, generates gravity. And that one was good. Uh, that one got a lot of people pissed off. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we were in a time where like not a lot of people could take a joke or yeah. understand sarcasm. But see, that's the best time to to poke at people, man. I, in my opinion, like <laughs> it's a good um, point. I always laugh at the wrong moments. Um, you know, that's I've, I've been that way my entire life. Like my, I've always, my father used to tell my mom all the time that, oh, your son's got a sick and twisted world pers- uh, perspective. You know, and I just dark dark humor is what really eggs me on throughout nice. the day. It's same. Makes the day. But Most of my friends that like not. that know me, they see me laughing at something. They want to know what it is because they know it's some dark fucking shit I'm laughing at usually. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> definitely. Um, and then too, so like Facebook, you know, uh, Facebook fucking hates me because I have like five different pages and they all have five thousand friends a piece on them. And then I have a couple actual pages on Facebook that got. You know, I think one of them has 10,000 followers. The other one's got like maybe 5,500. Because um, I, I do stream every once in a while. Um, but Facebook is constantly banning me. Like, I don't even get warnings anymore. They just hit me with a straight 30-day ban. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I just came off of a consecutive 60-day ban. Now I'm right back on another 30-day ban. And I was only like out of Facebook jail for maybe 48 hours. Uh, <laughs> Dude, Facebook is getting dumber lately. lately. Like uh, just in the past few weeks, me. I've gotten like uh, notifications of things. Yeah, like shows from like five years ago. Uh, we had one called Belly yep. Porn where we had a guy that like got in a bathtub and just rubbed like things on his stomach, uh, uh, like chopped meat and the raw meat flies. and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, like rotten milk, and he just rubbed it all on his stomach. And the name of the show was Belly Porn, and I just got a notification last week like this is not appropriate. Like, yeah, I, I, I've had them uh, ban me for shit that I posted years ago, and I'm like, how? How is that even right? <laughs> yes, like, yes. You gonna you gonna punish me for some shit I did five years ago? Like yeah. statue of limitations or some shit, bro? Come on. Like, is it just uh, on like? It, are they just updating this algorithm and then like the newest or, algorithm yeah. is catching a video from five years ago? Yeah, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Some shit, dude. That's what I'm thinking. I don't man. know unless like. I know I've had like some really big Karens like scroll through my feed yes. and find some shit from months or from a year or two ago and they'll end up reporting it because it'll be something that like all my shit pisses them off, but they'll finally make it to something that really just flips their switch and they're like, Oh no. It was all getting reported. Let me report it. Yeah. Okay. The amount of time oh, people man. wasted doing shit like that. Yeah. Like we get it on YouTube too. Yeah. We we get it all the time on YouTube for like certain certain segments or interviews, like all the time. See, and what really sucks about uh, all these social platforms being fucking communist and shit um, is like TikTok. Um, they're the highest paying social platform right now like they pay out bigger than anybody right yeah and um right after i went viral on facebook and and instagram i decided that i was going to try my luck with tiktok and see if i couldn't get on that little cash train real quick because i have i I don't make no money from any of my shit that's what i was gonna ask uh, What's that? I was going to ask that if you did. I didn't know if you were able to quit your day yeah, job. Yeah, no, a lot of people think I do, but I, I, I don't make a single dollar. Okay. And um, freaking uh, on TikTok, though, I posted my mullet video, and overnight it gained me like 35,000 followers on TikTok within the first 24 hours that I had created an account. And so I was like, bet. I was like, I'm on. I was like, I'm on this train. Let's so fucking just keep it going on TikTok and build this following so I can start cashing these chicks and uh i had another video that i posted on instagram and facebook that is still on both of those platforms but i posted it to tiktok and immediately tiktok hit me with a fucking permanent ban oh wow Wow. see i get it too where i post little uh clips of slim doing that character i talked about earlier he he does uh we read song lyrics every week 
And I have some yeah. that I put on Instagram that I never had a problem with. But like I said, him reading the song lyrics on TikTok, a lot of times they take it down because it's inappropriate for their standards. Like, they're definitely worse. Wow. Wow. Yeah, they they really are. And I mean, they got like 14-year-old girls shaking their coochie and shit on there, but they don't yeah. take that shit down. It's yeah, crazy. It is. Um but like the video I posted, it was it was nothing stupid. I mean, well, I mean it was kind of stupid, but it was nothing crazy. It was in the beginning of the video I'm pulled over by a state trooper and I'm like, "Well, boys, they caught the deer tag." And the next clip it's me driving down the street with fucking Dixie chicks playing in the background. And I'm like, well, boys, he let me go. I'm like, but he should have pulled me out and searched me. And the camera goes down to my crotch and I'm pulling an ounce of weed out of my fucking pants. And the next <laughs> clip is me smoking a blunt with fuck the police playing in the background. <laughs> and That's funny. It, so it was just fucking, it was a funny video. It was yeah. hilarious. And so, I put like that. That video didn't do well on Facebook. On Instagram, it did pretty well. Um, on YouTube, it did pretty well. But TikTok, it caught me a permanent ban from TikTok. Do you think the permanent ban yeah. was more because they saw your other video blowing up and they were like, "We don't want to pay this, this guy. guy. Is Let's just take over. He's taking over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got to pay all Spanish. this money to this guy. <laughs> we'll spam him." Right. right yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what the deal is because like a buddy of mine. Um, on Instagram, he's he's known by Ron Zoni, but he, his name is Ronnie Hatem. Um, he is he lives up in uh, Massachusetts, and he is like you know he works out. So he's a gym head. He's a, he's a meathead. He goes and gets jacked and shit. And uh, he posted a video of him deadlifting like four hundred something pounds, and you know like that uh, that shit that's in bodybuilders be like sniffing to get their adrenaline pumping or whatever that salt shit or whatever it is smelling salts sure that's what it, that's what i thought of smelling salts maybe i i don't know yeah 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 so he had like a whole ziploc bag of it and he, act, he was acting like it was cocaine and he posted it to tiktok and they permanently banned him for that wow wow yeah yeah dude it's like it's crazy it's crazy it, it, it's so wild um like, and I've, since then, um, so how TikTok works is you have to create an account through your phone number, not an email. And okay. so when they permanently ban you, if you just go get another phone with another phone number, Burn you can make phone. another account. Nice. So I have two phones, and so I jumped on my other phone, made another account. But now I think TikTok has anything related to my ass shadow banned because I created another account underneath the same name, reposted the same videos. They haven't got that account banned or those videos haven't been taken down, but they're not generating any views. Like they have like maybe a couple hundred views on them. Uh, but then like a month ago, I recreated my ZZ top video and I used uh, the song the breeze by Leonard Skinner and um, posted it to TikTok, and it generated over 200,000 views in like 48 hours. Man, you're like an overnight success and you just keep doing it. I love that. I don't know how, I don't know how, man. Like it's really retarded to be <laughs> honest. Cause like I'm fucking nobody. <laughs> like I'm just some dude with a mullet and some stupid facial hair. And, for some reason, people love it, but I mean, hey, whatever, whatever floats their boat. Yeah, yeah. I can. Uh, so, uh, I'll, I'll take the, the views and the likes. Being in being in Texas too, I don't know, John. Uh, up here, like marijuana is recreationally legal. Is it down there too, or is that just different state to state? No, it's completely illegal down here and there. <laughs> like, do you think that's going to be one of the last illegal. states that would ever legalize it? Like, how do you feel? I feel like Texas will be like one of the last states. Mm. That's um, kind of what I thought. We we got too many uh, old school Republicans still in office down here, um, and Bible thumpers too. That's to what honest. it is. I mean, like, yeah, it's it's like, like that certain all... certain parts of the country where it's all just Bibles and guns and, and Republicans yeah, like yeah, that, sure. <laughs> and and uh, like. The way I see it is 
there will be a time eventually when everyone on earth sees pot the exact same way. But the boomers are going to have to die off before that happens because they're still walking around calling it dope. It's that old, you know uh, I mean? yeah, that old mentality that, that like, yeah, from, like, yeah. uh, propaganda, like, reefer madness, like, that right, kind of stuff. Right, right, they, right, right. they still believe that, so, yeah. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, I, so when I was 19 years old, uh, I was homeless uh, for a whole year living out of a truck, and uh, I decided... Because I couldn't get a job anywhere because my ears were stretched out real big and I was covered in tattoos already at 19 years old. And in Texas at that time, in 2010, um, that really wasn't accepted in the workforce unless you were like in the tattoo industry. Yeah. And um, so I couldn't find a job anywhere. And I was like, where's the one place in the world I can go that nobody's going to give a fuck what I look like? Jersey. Like, Man, California. Oh, uh, yeah. I went to California. Okay. Okay, man. Uh, so I sold my truck for a one-way plane ticket and jumped on a plane to California and um, met a guy out there and we had similar mindset on business and shit and we became buddies and ended up becoming roommates and he had grown up in California his whole life. One day I come home and I was fixing to smoke some pot and he came in the door and he was like, what the fuck are you doing? And I was like, I'm fixing to get stoned. I was like, I don't know about you. I was like, but that's what I'm doing. And he's like, you're, you're not smoking that shit in my house. And I was like, the fuck I am. I pay bills here. <laughs> I'm definitely smoking this in my house. And, uh, he, uh, he was like, man, pox for losers. And I was like, I'll thump your ass upside your head. I was like, you're going to sit down and smoke this weed with me. And, uh, he refused, but finally I got his ass to sit down and smoke some weed with me. And now, you know, anybody that's Jewish? Uh, yeah, I, I do not Hasidics, but I have friends that are Jewish. Right. Okay. So have you ever made, I'm not sure if they're this way, but every Jewish feller that I've ever met, they're like, when they eat, like something a lot or if they know something can profit them a lot they will study it and learn everything they can about it and they will get really smart on the subject yes that, that, i don't know what it, like especially when money is involved right and uh my, my buddy was he, he was jewish and um he within a six-month process of me introducing him to smoking pot and what it was really like i come home one day and he had 70 plants in the backyard that he had bought <laughs> off of somebody and he had a full grow up going in our house wow. <laughs> and i was like what the fuck is going on he's you like, just brought this next level of research yeah. i've been studying he's like we're gonna grow this weed and we're gonna sell it and i was like oh all God. right <laughs> i was like let's do it man i was like if you got the know-how he was like i do and what's crazy is uh we ain't even homeboys anymore, but I'll give him credit where it's due. His name's Noah Fader. Um, he lives in uh, Sacramento, California. But after I exited his life and we were, you know, not in uh, business anymore together, uh, he became one of the most successful growers in Northern California at a young age and was supplying a lot of dispensaries in Northern California with their bud that was his bud that he was growing in a fucking 800 square foot home. Wow, that's awesome. And you created and that. And yeah, you made that guy. He <laughs> owes you, bro. Yeah, he owes yeah, you. Dude. John. I we, pretty much, man, like, I was I was like his dad, you know. Like, I yeah. first I, did, so I, just, I made I that. shit him out myself. Like, <laughs> at first, when I, you know, like, he was totally against pot. He yeah. thought everything mm. that they had taught us in school was real. Yeah. He's like, it's a gateway drug. And I was like, to the fridge. I was like, maybe to bed. <laughs> I was like, maybe stopped at a fucking stop sign waiting for it to turn green. That's what I did. <laughs> John, we have to wrap it up, dude, but thank you so much for talking to us. It's been a blast. Hey, man, anytime, bro. Next time, if you want me on again, just holler at me. I'll do it. Fuck yeah. Where can everybody find you? Oh, man. Hit me up at Two Tone 12 Valve on Instagram and uh, on Facebook underneath John Deerte. Like I said, I got like five pages on Facebook. Just hit them all up. Nice. Have a good one, brother. <laughs>